Amul, the largest food company in India with a turnover of 61,000 crores, has ambitious plans to become the largest food company in the world. Its first campus from where India's white revolution began is located in a city called Anand about two hours away from Ahmedabad. Amul works with 36 lakh farmers and gives nearly 80% of whatever it earns back to them. We catch up with Mr. Aris Sodhi who is steering Amul into becoming a global behemoth. really uh, the only uh, you know CEO of a company I, I can't call Amul a company anymore it's it's a huge movement of sorts with 35 lakh farmers as your partners you've got a huge setup you've maintained quality standards Amul has played such an instrumental role in becoming in making India as one of the top suppliers of milk and top manufacturers of milk in the world in the world really such big ambitions very grounded approach how do you do it mr sodhi let me begin by asking you first what are the new things that we can expect from up i see a lot of new products here well dear shweta ji i'm not star ceo but you can call me i'm a ceo of a very very star brand or the organization which is owned by 36 lakh farmers so farmers who supply milk twice in a day they are the owner right. and uh, as far as you have started what products actually i was expecting in the end <laughs> but I, so thought, you, I mean Yuki, you do been... you give us any idea my team will try it and if taste wise we our people approve it we'll launch it but i believe you have some 80 products oh, yeah inspired. you see new product development new awareness development is a continuous process it all depends the feedback from the consumers from the housewives from the trade partners what new varieties are required variants are required in the existing product ice cream flavored milk milk powder butter we keep on adding hmm. besides that i can say for next one or two years our emphasis is in two three categories one is the organic not dairy, organic products. Okay. Rice, wheat, atta, pulses, spices. Basically sourcing from the existing organic cooperative societies or the FPOs. So that one side they are encouraged to produce more because once they get more price. The other side consumer like you can buy organic products, ark meat because the trust when Amul brand is there. So that is the thing. Second is we have realized second product category which we are putting a lot of effort in investments, production capacity is the Indian sweets or Mithai. Because we have realized after do Dahi charge is there with people buy is Mithai. So and gradually trust over Mithai is was going away because of people feel the uh, loose Mithai they are using adulterated koa so an amul brand is there so naturally it will be 100% pure so that is the investment which we are making in all the 90 our plants fresh sweets now technology is available for the 45 days shelf life third category which we are investing a lot is the frozen products like our potato frozen products and snacks that is the category in which we are investing a lot and fourth category is which you are having taste that is because to this youth like you, they want protein, high protein. And you know, the best source for protein in food where body absorb maximum is the milk. Whether you take milk, you take yogurt or some other protein, milk or protein based drink, the body absorption for protein is maximum. So that is why we have launched already protein rich, lassi, or the uh, buttermilk with 15%, 16% protein. And then a lot of products are coming in the pipeline for protein. Fascinating. It's a very, very interesting pipeline. At the moment, Amul is a 61,000 crore turnover company, uh, but it has set, it, set for itself a target to become the largest food company in the world by 2047. 
tell us a little bit more about this just give us a sense of your ambition and well your it's, a, it's not the ambition of amul or any individual or my team i think it is the ambition of india ambition of bharat i mean rural india ambition of india's farmers or those millions of ladies or the women because for them dairy or animal husbandry source of livelihood so one side 68% people of families in the villages they want a very dependable source of livelihood right. the other side there are today india has got 1.38 billion people which will be around 2047 around 1.7 billion mm-hmm. and these people want more dairy more protein more fat and more rich vegetarian food so market is 1.7 billion the other 50% out of that will be the villages who want to have livelihood so this dairy can be india's number one world uh, uh, agriculture produce so amul which is the market leader in india mm. where india will be contributing 45% of the dairy mm. to the world so once you are market leader in india and got other 50 55 countries already which were there you will be the world leader in the dairy i don't think i mean any i mean the way we are growing every year with the 15 16% average growth even less than that we can achieve it. so from 61000 crore you're looking at an 18 lakh crore that's the kind of jump you're looking at and you're hoping to do that on the back See, of i can tell you only 11 years back when i took as a managing director our turnover was 8000 crore today last year 61 this year it will be minimum 72 so already nine times yes right so it's a realistic target ah it's a realistic target okay. i mean when 40 years back i joined amul right amul turnover was 121 crore and that time if somebody would have said that by that time you are be having your last playing last inning it will be more than 70000 crore i would not believe I, I, we really hope so. We really hope so. We would love to see an Indian well, company. You will make it. You know, you will. Because it was like you will make it. That's true. That's true. I want to get a sense of your uh, management style, uh, Mr. Sodi, because you know, like we spoke, you've got 36 lakh farmers as partners. You earn 100 out of which 80 is given back to the farmer. Uh, all the profits are given back to mm-hmm. the farmers. Mm-hmm. yet the yet the company has continued to grow so uh how do you how, you know you got very i mean you got quality checks in place you got farmers that are benefiting from this so there is a model that has evolved which 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 uh, is a very unique model and it's very very inspirational for many companies hmm. well you see the reason for this success of amul what today is after 75 years the way it is growing reason is simple so we are in the business of a agri produce or farmers produce one side is a produce of the income to the farmers other side consumer like you are getting very very safe nutritious tasty food at affordable price so one side farmers is encouraged to produce more invest more in animal husbandry because she is feeling that this is a very dependable source if i invest 50000 rupees i am going to get 3 to 4000 rupees per month by selling milk and income so investment on more production is encouraged the other side consumer like you feel that here is a product very tasty food very nutritious food are using very very pure natural product and being processed and packed by the world latest technology and available next to my door shop or online but at very very affordable price so consumer is happy farmer is happy business has to grow and what we are trying to do is how to reduce the gap between the purchase price and the sale price to the consumer so our basic management objective is that whatever a liter of milk we sell in delhi bombay kolkata gujarat at least for 1 rupee we charge to the consumer 
एटी पैसे गोज टू दी कंज्यूमर और एटी पैसे गोज टू दी फार्मर्स सो बोथ विल बी इनकरेज it's a fascinating model um ensuring that you are ahead of the curve ensuring quality checks how do you how do you do that as in are you uh, you know uh, i was i was i was told that you're going to get uh, these uh, uh, sampling machines put samplers put in your uh, milk vans which you can test the milk as 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 it comes into the tanker so uh, you know how do you keep yourself constantly on the move what are the uh, How do you stay ahead of the curve? Because Shweta ji, milk is a white which has got water, milk solids. Mm. So it milk is also very prone to adulteration. Right, absolutely. Water yes. you can be added. Mm. You can add other vegetable oil also because then price is paid based on the fat. Mm. So, so but that is why we are checking milk mm. at all the level. Right, first is the village cooperative society. When farmer brings milk, it is checked for the quality. There are around twenty-four tests which we are conducting at the village level on the milk, so adult trends and other right. thing, and uh, electronically, no manual. Mm. Then when same milk is coming to the dairy, and you have seen the tanker, there automatically sampling is taken place, and nobody here knows that from which society has this come. So. Here, besides checking the adulterant, because payment is based on the fat and protein, right, right, right. So that each society gets the correct price for the milk. Yeah. And that is also electronic. Right. And once milk is processed before packaging, also quality check to ensure that whatever the standards required by the FSSI or Amul standards which are higher, this product, this butter, this cheese, this milk. Those are all standards. Then only it is allowed to be packed. So how? So for instance, how is this? How does the vision come into play? You know, your farmers have apps that they are downloading to keep a track of how much milk they are giving, supplying. Uh, you you've got these uh, sampling tests that are being put in. So who is putting this vision together? Your board has farmers and people from a very rural background, while uh, all the IITs and IIMs tend to go to MNCs. But you are setting a model for the MNCs to follow. You see, anything you want to do in today's world at the mass scales, where we have got masses both side, one side farmers, other side consumer, without adoption of technology, especially digital integration, you can't do it. Right. Firstly, because digital integration in the whole supply chain brings for our farmers and more transparency. more efficiency more speed and more data to analyze data for our profession like us and as for who are the people i mean we have got the best of the people from various professional colleges whether best of engineering college management college like institute of rural management anand or even few iims and other management so it is not that management graduates go only for mncs Because Amul is also not less than any MNC. Oh, Whether it's done otherwise. No, no, absolutely, there is no so comparison. I, I don't know what is your definition. I mean, uh, today, I mean, we are competing with the world's best of the MNCs in food or dairy, and we are much ahead of them. So it is only our thing is that, uh, and uh, there are professional who are very dedicated. Because when you work in Amul, it's not only you are earning your salary or livelihood. You are doing some dharm ka karya also. Absolutely. See, if I work in any MNC, all the profit goes to whom? Some fellow in foreign or better road or somewhere else, Absolutely. or maybe now everybody is investing. But here, if you sell a kg of butter, that profit or that money goes to the poor women or widow in the village who is dependent on you, and you expect how much blessing you are getting like that. Right. So our team is not getting the remuneration; they are getting blessings of the millions of farmers. And that's lovely that you, you know, you think like that, and your team thinks like that. And I think that comes through at your campus here. It's uh, very lovely to be here. Um, we have the budget that's coming. Any uh, request uh, from the finance minister? Well, I we request government uh, 
first of all that they should understand the feelings and the complexities and the different situations in which farmers or agriculture produce cooperatives are working i think first first of all i like to say today animal husbandry or dairy is contributing 30% to the agriculture gdp i have only what at least if not 30% at least 15% of the agriculture budget should be allocated to the animal husbandry you see it, it has got the future and animal husbandry anybody who is not having land our 70% members are landless and marginal farmers so by putting more resources in animal husbandry your roi will be 3 to 4 times more than the other agriculture thing so one that mindset because you see traditionally from the green revolution time we have been spending more but i think gradually looking the future of india requirement of india rural bharat we have to invest more in animal husbandry second is i have got very very logical question and i am not able to find the answer for that i have asked to many people you said in india income tax a farmer is exempted from income tax from any agriculture income you have got 50 acre you have got 100 acre you have got 10 acre what are you are not pay but a farmer with 10 cows or buffalo having no land he is bound to pay the income tax even he is he is or she is liable to pay so dairy or animal husbandry income should be included as part of agriculture income and it should be exempted from the income tax but i think uh, f- uh, farmers with cattle say 10 cows are making up to a crore a year they should pay tax <laughs> no 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 it's not a 10 crore the, they may be having 100 see but if you are having i don't think any farmer is making one crore now <laughs> uh, and uh, any of when they buy things they pay lot of gst okay so tax they are in but i'm saying why the difference you are having 100 acre you are not paying but you are having 10 cow and 10 cow you uh, you earn 5 to 6 lakh rupees i don't i mean whether they are paying or not paying is a separate issue but why they should be not classified dairy or any investment should not be classified in, as agriculture a third small thing is you see milk is tax exempted you add sugar and little flavor so to make it more tasty for kids is it tax 12% usi ghee is 100% milk indian that is tax 12% the palm oil and all or any edible oil which is imported from the outside is tax only 5% okay so what we are saying at least look into the indian dairy farmers what are and you don't need we are not asking any subsidies like uh, fertilizer seed or credit we are not we are asking please treat, give us our due share um in terms of your marketing spends you less spend less than a percent of your turnover on marketing uh going forward uh, in terms of your spending priorities what do we see amul focusing on well you see i don't think any brand requires spending more than average 1% if somebody is spending more than 1% because you have decided to spend more okay i can get a shoe for 3000 4000 also i can get a 60000 because i have got lot of money so you want you see in both of company there is a sell for advertising promotion and they need their budget 7% 8% once they get it they have to spend it when they want to so naturally spending is not a problem earning is the problem right. Right. so naturally if they have to earn that much and when do you add in the cost your price will go up your price will go up you need more to spend on advertising so it's a vicious circle okay. so we follow umbrella branding so only ek hi bachcha so you have to nurture and only one brand we don't have one dozen or two dozen or three dozen brand so naturally you have to spend more okay um any um advice or any uh, learnings that you would like to share on uh, for a lot of young entrepreneurs who are starting out right now you know we've seen uh, 
there's a there, there's been a startup boom in the country you see first of all uh, any entrepreneur i like to say in you know, they should have full confidence and trust in india 138 crore people of 1.38 income having india is the one of the india india is one of the biggest and fastest growing market especially for the food india all the sources are very reasonably priced markets are very dense cost of distribution is very very low as compared to other part of india but what is required is the passion passion and some patience so and uh, uh, you can build in food what i advise everybody always if you are launching any food just thinking making a gully bread or a city bread or a district bread then you go for state three state four state don't think national in the beginning okay. think small and nurture and make yeah, it grow yeah. okay um I had one la- yeah one last question that I one last question that I have for you. Uh it, by when can we expect the organic product line to be introduced into the market? Uh Shweta ji already eight organic products we have launched in some parts of Gujarat and now in this week we are launching in Delhi because uh, is the organic product is not like that you can source raw material from the market. Right. You need when amul is selling it has to be 100% pesticide free heavy metal free so when we are buying from farmers we are buying from uh, uh, markets we generally we have is uh, when we test it in spite of that fellow maybe having certificate but when we test it we find some uh, pesticide residue so we reject it so sourcing marketing more than the marketing sourcing of raw material for organic produce is the very big challenge especially if you want to pack and market and a very trust trusted brand like amul right how much do you typically allocate for your capacity upgradation expansion it's a, you see there are a lot uh, it's a continuous thing generally every year 800 to 1000 crore rupees are invested only in building new plants same amount is invested in the backward integration like the village level milk collection system and more than that farmers are investing in buying new cows or buffalo okay. each farmer buy one or two so naturally one or two lakh rupees one fellow is investing and you can understand if 30 out of right. 36 million and half of people invest in one cow how much so right. investment is huge so you help them buy the buy you know, we facilitate that but we don't take any guarantee we you see any bank is very keen to give to the farmer who wants to get into dairy because their marketing at very stable price is assured so for a dairy farmer getting loan from a good bank at a very very reasonable price is not a problem state government is also giving some schemes interest subsidy or a lot of other facility for building a cow shed etc especially for the women if you want to build state gujarat state government a number of good schemes Okay, from where we do hope that uh, Amul becomes from the taste of India to taste of the world. Thank- dairy to the world. Yeah, dairy to the world. India, dairy to the world. India, dairy to the world. Thank you very much, Mr. Sodi. We wish you the very best, and we hope to keep coming back to this campus, and we hope to see it as lovely as always. Thank You're you. You're welcome anytime, like anybody. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.